Hi everyone, if you follow security news, and I assume you do since you're watching this channel, you've no doubt seen the news about CCleaner. Unfortunately, it appears that version 5.33 of this popular utility contained a multi-stage malware payload that was bundled with the legitimate signed installer package. The 32-bit binary included in the installation package contained malicious code that included C2, command and control, and DGA, domain generation algorithm, functionality. As a side note, it was also reported that CCleaner Cloud version 1.07.3191 was affected as well. This news first came out on Monday, September the 18th, 2017, via this post from Cisco's Talos Threat Research Group. This is a great article that contains an in-depth technical write-up of how they discovered the malware and also provides some IOCs for detecting it as well. I'll include a link to this in the video's description and I would highly recommend you review it. So the version of CCleaner that was affected, version 5.33, was released on 15 August 2017 and was generally available up until the release of version 5.34 on 12 September 2017. So if you downloaded CCleaner within this time period, you were most likely affected. I've used this product for many years on my Windows boxes, and most recently I was using it with some test VMs in my home lab. I update the software on a very frequent basis because there's usually a new version released every month or so, as you can see from the version history page here. At the time I read the article, the version I had installed was 5.34, which apparently was not affected. However, I wanted to know if I had ever had version 5.33 installed on my VM. So call me paranoid, but if that software was installed for any length of time, I'd like to know about it. From a forensic standpoint, if I wanted to know whether or not the installer package for CCleaner 5.33 was ever executed on my system, how would I determine that? Well, one way to do so would be via user assist. As you'll recall, we can parse user assist to find evidence of GUI-based application execution on Windows systems. Now, there are many tools available to parse this artifact, but I decided to use user assist view, which is an older utility from Nearsoft. It's completely free, and it's been around for quite a while. Officially, it supports up to Windows Vista. However, in my testing, it seems to still work fine on Windows 10 systems as well. So in the next section of this video, we're going to switch over to my Windows 10 VM and fire up user assist view so we can parse the user assist artifact and see if we can find any evidence of this particular version of the CCleaner installer being run on the machine. So let's go ahead and switch over to the Windows VM now. Okay, so here we are on one of my Windows 10 VMs. First, we'll need to know the name of the file we're looking for. Luckily, Piriform, the maker of CCleaner, who is now owned by Avast, by the way, uses a consistent naming convention for the installers. They're all in the format of ccsetup5xx.exe, where xx is the subversion. So I'm going to be looking for evidence of execution of ccsetup533.exe. So let's go ahead and launch user assist view. When I launch the program, you'll notice that it's currently sorted by name, but I could just as easily sort by any of these other headers, including modified time, so I could see the most recently used executables on this system. In our case, though, name will work best because I'm going to be looking for CC setup. And as you can see, it starts right here with 515 and it ends with 534. And if you look down near the bottom, you will see, unfortunately, CC setup 533.exe showing a run count of 1 and that it was executed on 8-25-2017 at 8.47 p.m. If we switch back over to the Puriform version history page, we can see that that was released on 15 August 2017, so it was installed about 10 days later on this particular VM. So that means at this point that I automatically distrust this VM. There's only one true recourse, and that's to burn the machine to the ground and rebuild it. So I'm often asked why I use the nuclear option. And the reason is simple. How can anyone truly attest that a machine is clean? While this is only a test VM and there's no data of any sensitive nature that was ever stored here, this is the same approach I would take for a compromised system in a production environment. Now, while this may generate additional work for an organization's IT support team, the only option that truly mitigates the risk is to restore from trusted media. 
So this was a short, unplanned video, but I wanted to go ahead and share my experiences with you and my thought process when I was trying to find evidence of execution of this particular installer. I'll include a link to the Cisco Talos article, which provides an in-depth look at the malware, and I'll also link to the Nearsoft User Assist View tool that I used. As always, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, share, like, etc. I hope this video has been informative for you, and I'll see you next time.